And I will offer the declaration for why we need an electronic meeting if Jerry would offer the motion itself. But chapter 1280, chapter 1283 of the 2020 acts of the assembly addresses the ability of, of conservation districts to hold electronic meetings without the need for a quorum being present in a single location when the state of emergency has been declared pursuant to uh, sections 44-146.17 of the Code of Virginia. So Jerry, if you would be kind enough to offer the motion. Uh, so moved. That's sufficient. That's, that's not the motion. That's just a declaration. Okay. I, I don't have the motion in front of me. I'm no, sorry. I can I can read the motion. I have it. Okay. And it says, I move that the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District Board of Directors has determined the nature of the declared COVID-19 virus emergency makes it impracticable or unsafe for us to assemble in a single location for the purpose of transacting business statutorily required or necessary for us to continue operations and discharge of our lawful purposes, duties and, and uh, responsibilities. That's the motion. Uh, I, I would so move. Okay, Jerry, has a move that we have this electronic meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. Monica seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll, I'll just call the roll. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, say nay. Uh, Director Peters? Aye. Director Bordas? Aye. Director Bilger? Aye. Director Corner? I think I heard him say aye. The motion carries. So thank you, folks. We're ready to go, I believe, with our operations executive committee meeting. Uh, we have a draft agenda that I think you've got. Some of us, like myself, may actually log off the at least the audio, the visible portion, the uh, after a while, so I can see things on my screen. But we, we talked about a number of things. Laura, do you have any particular preference in the way you want to address these? Um, no, I think we can begin with just approval of the the meeting minutes, and then um, just to let you all know, I have just a quick update that I wanted to provide to you all on the di uh, district director and uh, personal policies that we've been discussing um, uh, recently. So I have some updates for you on that, and then I did want to jump into the annual plan work and um, strategic plan and, and provide some recommendations for uh, promotions in in the board meeting, and then be available to. Answer questions that you might have regarding the budget and the um, and the staff plan. So that's, I think if we want to go through that and. Uh, Is that satisfactory with all the directors? Sure. All right, Laura, proceed, please. Um, so there, there were minutes that were provided to everyone um, as a result of our uh, October 27th uh, meeting, and I'm happy to uh, take any comments or comments that need to be made to those minutes. Does anybody have any corrections, additions, or comments on the minutes? No. I don't see any, Laura. I would make a motion they be approved as uh, as distributed. There's been a motion the minutes of the last operations committee meeting be approved as distributed. Is there a second? I'll second. And moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, once again, I'll call the roll. If you are in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed, say nay, please. Director Peters? Aye. Director Corner? Aye. Director Bordas? Aye. Director Bilger? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. All right, thank you all very much. Um, so I wanted to just give a brief update on the um, district director and personnel policies updates that we've been discussing now for a couple of months. Um, I wanted to actually thank Jerry and John uh, of them to get some clarification and uh, make sure that we were all on the same page in our session that has happened recently. And, um, and to also, uh, I wanted to actually compliment Jerry on this document that he pulled together regarding the personnel policies and the the table that is in the back. I think it's a framework for, for discussion. And while there's some opportunities to populate some of these um, rows and columns um, with information that we already have, I think it's a great framework again for being able to review some of our personnel policies, which I think we should be moving forward with um, course of the latter half of this fiscal year. There were a couple of questions that came up during that discussion that, that I think really key 
and important in regards to clarifying some of the concerns that, that have been raised. And I wanted to let you know that I did reach out to um, our uh, representative with the Office for the Attorney General in regards to what coverage they provide for, um, for boards as well as um, staff related to employment and uh, concerns and things like that, as, along with other uh, other ways that they represent us. Um, much of that information was actually provided in the orientation material that uh, Debbie did go over, but it was really uh, great to be able to, to touch base with him and get clarification. Um, so they do uh, provide representation to board members and, um, and all employees actually um, in the district. So they would not necessarily represent an individual employee who has a grievance with the district, but they would represent the district. Um, also, one of the questions that came up was regarding the liability insurance that is available for board representatives as well as the district employees. And um, DCR does cover, they do pay for um, a liability, public liability uh, plan with the Dep Division of Risk Management uh, for Soil and Water Conservation Districts. So I, I got all sorts of information from, um, from the representatives with uh, um, the Department of Risk Management um, that I look forward to sharing with you because I think it will provide some clarification. But one, one point that I did wanna mention, and I can actually give you what that coverage is if, you're, if you are interested. Um, but we do have certain certain things that we do need to maintain in order to be able to uh, to cover. And those again were some things that were provided within the orientation materials, and there are things that we do already as well. Um, Laura, but, can you, do you have reference to which part of? I'd look for that. I couldn't find it in the. You know which section it's in? Sure. Hold on one moment. Let me pull it up here. Uh, You know, I don't know if I've got the actual. Well, the, you're talking about the code code section, Jerry, or the or no, the uh, handbook section. Uh, if we have code, that'd be nice. But I, Laura was saying it's someplace in the DCR guide that we all got. It, it is. I don't. I only just got the subset of the the slides, and I didn't go through to actually look in the manual where. But those are specific. We can get it offline, I'll, Laura. I will forward all of that information to you, so you have copies. It also includes the. I actually, one of the things that's been really interesting um, uh, is we've been trying to really um, make sure that we've got all the documentation uh, in place for a lot of the, these kinds of questions so that there is some continuity when board members change, when staff change, things like that. So we'll be pulling, making sure that we've got all of this information. But one thing that we, we just didn't have was the actual plan. What was the, what is covered um, through that liability uh, coverage. And so we've, we've got that now and we'll make sure that we keep that on time. Um, but I will share all of that information with you. It just arrived yesterday and I figured you had heard from me enough yesterday. <laughs> but I will make sure that you um, you get copies of all of the communication that, um, that I've been having. But anyway, I did wanna let you know that that coverage does include um, uh, payment of attorney fees and expenses that are occurred in defending persons or entities while acting in an authorized government or proprietary capacity in the course and scope of employment or authorization. So um, those are those are just some some of the questions that came up um, as a result of of uh, of that conversation. But I do think again that there's some uh, some great opportunity to continue to refine um, some of our personnel policies, and that's something that I I look forward to to working toward in the latter half of this fiscal year. Um, and I see it certainly as something that you know, we're you know there may be new things that come up as they have even just during my eight period eight years um, here with the district where FSLA will change. COVID policies change, all sorts of things um, may impact some of those, um, some of those things. But I think coming coming together to um, take a look at what we have, take a look at where there's opportunities for enhancements uh, and clarifications, I think is gonna be really very, very useful. Um, so I look, I very much look forward to that. Um, so what we, um, one of the things that, 
John and Jerry and I talked about as well at that meeting just a couple of weeks ago was the fact that um, the this time right before the board meeting is not long enough for these really important conversations. Um, and so as we look into the new fiscal year, I wanted to actually touch base with you all and see it, whether or not we wanted to continue to do this as a full executive committee um, or to move forward with a smaller group. And that's, you know, really everybody's discretion. I think I've heard from most of you an interest in wanting to participate in these conversations. Um, and also to see if there's anybody from our associate directors that we may want to bring in as well who may have some um, history with the programs. Folks like Diane, for example, who's my predecessor um, and can help to figure out where some of the, the history is. We've got a lot of oral history um, in our organization and, uh, you know, trying to document what it is that we do is going to be really important again for, for continuity moving forward. So. Um, I, Laura, um, I, I personally, well, again, thanks to everyone, you, Jerry, John, for, you know, talking about this and getting it started. I, I definitely agree that I think that we should expand the opportunity to have a, a discussion and maybe even consider a full day if possible um, to or a half day, whatever works for people's schedule to kind of maybe do a little bit of the history and, and think about what we want to talk about in 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 preparation of creating this, this the outcome ultimately um, of, of what we're looking for. So it might be a half day, it might be a full day. I think if we can come up with a with a nice agenda and invite our associate directors in, I, I would be open to that for sure. I think it's, it's always useful to have, um, especially in something like this, people who have worked with the district for a while and, and are connected to it through means of various roles and responsibilities. It's definitely, uh, I think, uh, uh, helpful. You bet. Laura, you know, have any of the associate directors expressed an interest? Do they understand this is going on? Um, uh, so you know, have, have you reached out to them yet? I guess is the question. Not really. I don't, I don't think we have. have. With, with, um, I have had some conversations with Diane. Um, yeah, but uh, no, really, it's it's. Uh, I haven't I haven't expanded it much further than that. Um, I think Diana is the one who has the most. You know, um, it was important to get her perspective on sort of some of the some of the the history in the past, of how we've you know how things were developed. It's interesting too. I was just sharing with John. Um, I went deep into our central files yesterday, looking for something completely different, and came across this folder. This folder with policy statements of the NDSWCD at the top. And these were from Diane's predecessor and her predecessor's predecessor. Um, and many of them were when the district was just establishing their employees. So establishing some of those initial policy statements and things like that. So this has a lot of drafts. Um, it doesn't have the finals necessarily. I'll have to go through the past board minutes in order to see what was actually passed. I know this is Jerry. I just saw the grimace. I had the same grimace <laughs> as well. Um, but it was really helpful because there were some questions that I've had where why were things established a particular way? What was the thought process with certain, you know, certain items? Um, something that's eluded us for a long time was where did the unemployment reserve fund come from and what's that amount? Um, and where did that, you know, what do we need to perhaps adjust? Anyway, these policy statements, many of them were incorporated into what I like to call the red book, which was what I was passed, um, which was the, the, the policies of our board and what is now our policy document. Um, and that we we keep updated uh, now. So many of these have been incorporated into that. Um, but I do want to let you know that back in 1986, we had a personnel committee, um, and many of them uh, did work on a, a wide variety of, of of different items. I found some agendas. Again, no minutes. Darn it. Um, but uh, some of the things that we're talking about right now are things that they discussed at that time as well. Um, I don't think that that things were codified, unfortunately, um, to the manner in which they have been able to continue. So I do, again, just want to express 
um, my thanks to our board because I think, again, you're all coming from this from a perspective of wanting to enhance our programs, document what we're, what we're doing, um, and, uh, and be able to ensure that there's some better continuity. I can tell you, I will document it. <laughs> well, I just found that yesterday, so we really haven't had time to go back into it and try to try to track everything. Yeah. Now, let, me, let me suggest, you know, that's you, worth doing. You, you started off this part of your discussion saying we should think about maybe forming smaller committees to, to work on stuff. I would suggest we have so much stuff on our plate now as directors. We've got the, the not only the personal management policies, but the other policies that John's email yesterday, you know, looking at the Dakota example said there may be some other things we want to consider. We have a strategic plan, which has been sitting dormant waiting for us to to uh, get over Zoomness or I guess WebExness. Um, uh, I'm wondering if maybe we should should have have an initial, as Monica has, has suggested, a fairly long meeting saying, listen, guys, everybody that's interested, social directors, directors, staff, I don't care. So listen, here's this whole this whole melange of things that need to fit together. Um, go through them once for everybody, and then say, okay, who's volunteering for what? You know, kind of parcel it out. Actually, get their ideas on how to parcel it out, and and proceed maybe then in smaller groups as opposed to just a smaller group. The personnel management uh, memo that I sent really just discusses personnel management. Mm -hmm. John's the you know message yesterday highlighted the fact that there's a lot of other policies that maybe you know along with a rethinking of our of our strategic uh, plan uh, we need to need to reevaluate too. Um, we have in the past I, I had the good fortune of having uh, long tenured personnel uh, who knew their jobs and just kind of you know, proceeded with it. Um, I'm I'm hoping that we're able, we put ourselves in a position where we can take on new types of work within our, within our ball field and, and become known as the people to go to when it comes time to put some thinking you know, to, to an issue. And, and I think that's, that's not a just keep doing what you're doing, <laughs> been doing every day. It's, it's, a, it's a more, a, um, what's the word, a, a broader scope of, of, of interest. That's Jerry, what to capture. Jerry, let me offer another comment on that. I appreciate Monica's uh, suggestion. I think if we could find that kind of time fairly soon, where we could have, say, a few hours or a half a day or something that we could talk about all of this together, it would be helpful. But then we might want to form some drafting committees, if you will, exactly. would be willing to take on the task. For example, I mentioned one that is is something I'm concerned about, and that's the whole notion of grievances. And, and how we deal with grievances. Maybe a drafting committee, once we got everybody's input, could draft up something that we could talk about as a full board and then make a decision on whether or not this was worthy of being a policy that we wanted to approve. I think, I think again, oh, sorry, Monica, you're on mute. Oops. I, I agree with you, John. I think um, when we approach this as a board, we have to be really thoughtful about what our ultimate outcomes are for what we need to deliver. Right. And so for that, I agree that we need to sit down and say, what are our board priorities to ensure as a board where what are our ultimate outcomes? And then we can design the strategies of how to get there with whatever those subcommittees are, because it may be that um, the, the grievances are one, but obviously the ability for our board policy is another. So we have a number of things each of us wants, but they may be so many the list is might be too large so we have to look at what we can accomplish what is our time frame for accomplishing what are the priorities as a board um and then the other thing i need to introduce into this is that i have been meeting with supervisors so i am collecting a list of what their expectations are from the northern virginia soil and water conservation district um kind of what their ideas are and those are things that we as a board have to really include above and beyond our initial priorities because we are ultimately responsible to the to Fairfax County as well, um, given what we what we work in partnership with them. So those things have to be included at this meeting and understanding that maybe our priorities may have to shift a little because we have to answer to our partner and one of our most important partners. And as well as the as the soil and water board uh, as from the Commonwealth's perspective, what are the 
issues because clearly we'll be facing a legislative um, issues right on the forefront of the next year. So those are things that we have to just kind of align ourselves with, if I may. I, I really appreciate the fact that you're doing that. Um, I, could we put on the agenda, uh, maybe for the executive committee meetings, some uh, some results that Monica gets from her discussions? I would, would very much like to know what they are and, and start Absolutely. tracking them, you know, like take them yeah. seriously. So I'm, creating a, I'm creating a spreadsheet from each district and they do vary. I mean, they're very brief meetings because most of the individuals have had a COVID response um, and that's been their priority. And so some of them are being introduced to the concept of how to work with us in a different light, having me approach them in, in, from board to board. But um, it is it is setting in motion a lot of conversations and kind of thinking outside the box of what some of the priorities might be. And I definitely look forward to presenting that. I just had one last week, and so I'm trying to compile it so we can get as many as possible. I haven't been able to meet with all of them, and, but I hope to. Um, but but I can certainly present what I have up until that point. Yeah, let us know so, what the time even. I think I think that's really valuable information. I think I heard Laura say that she's willing to try to schedule uh, that half day meeting with all of us. And given how much we still want to talk about at this particular operations committee meeting, I suggest we probably need to address some of these other issues. But Laura, if you'd be willing to do that, and I think you talked about doing it as quickly as you could, but uh, yes, we'll yes. all try to respond with our schedules and, and uh, find that time when we can spend some time working on this together. I think that that would be great. I think, um, and again, I just wanted to want to acknowledge um, that there are a number of things, and and certainly setting a pace and setting kind of this this uh, strategy for moving forward with reviewing these um, is, is going to be really important. And I think, from my standpoint, one of the things that is also going to be really important, as you can see, I've started to scratch some things down on Jerry's table already, is making sure that we document what the current. What has been adopted, what hasn't been adopted, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's at least a, a starting point for some of the conversations and, and the constructive um, feedback and, and uh, considerations. So, Laura, I think we still have COVID-19, the budget, and the strategic plan to talk about at least. So I did want to let you know, I am, um, I just, uh, John, I don't know if you saw my note to you, but I do need to make <coughs> the board schedule yes. for um, this morning in regards to the COVID policies. Yes. Unfortunately, don't have all of that information available um, for you today, but we've got, we've basically, I want to let you know that we've been following the temporary standard that the, the governor has put in place. We've been following county partners, um, particularly facilities management in regards to making sure we have a safe workplace. In our staff and doing all of the other um, requirements um, that's necessary, providing masks, sanitizer, um, contact tracing sheets, um, self-assessment, all that kind of exciting things, um, um, but those are, are put in place. So I will have all of that information available. More important things is back in May, you might recall, we passed the, the, the what they lovingly call FICRA, the Families First Corona Response Act. So that's where we incorporated basically that we will, um, that we're participating in that program as well and have all of the resources available for uh, folks to be able to have the extended family medical leave um, and paid sick leave as well, if, if necessary. Let's hope our team doesn't need it. Um, so I wanted to just actually the the conversation we were just having segues very well um, within the the annual plan of work and our strategic plan. Um, what I shared with you is a um, draft of our 2021 annual plan of work and the memo as you'll as you'll see in the memo. Um, we're really just COVID is is certainly still causing a lot of uncertainty and uh, you'll you'll see as I present the budget we're kind of all looking into the crystal ball a little bit in regards to what what kind of transitions that we had to make really quickly this past year what's going to be continuing and what what is is stalling out I think one of the interesting things is that um, our programs haven't slowed down um, and the demand for some of our services also has not slowed down. I think as people are getting outside, um, they're getting to know their properties a little bit more. They're starting to see um, a little bit, you know, more information or kind of getting more familiar with with things that look a little out of um, out of whack. 
the number of cases that we're continuing to respond to from green sheets and the amount of interest again that um, folks have in participating in VCAP is continuing to stay steady or increase as well. Um, so, and on our education side, um, those programs have pivoted really well over to the more virtual environment. Um, but there are some programs that we have that we're still kind of uncertain whether or not our partners are going to be continuing to move those forward. Um, I shared the example of the um, revitalize, uh, uh, what was it? Restore, revitalize, and replant. That's the R3 program that the Department of Public Works and Environmental Services Stormwater Planning runs with the schools. Um, since they're, the schools are running more virtually, that's an example of a program that perhaps we don't need to continue to, to partner in in the same way because they're not executing it in the same way. Um, so those are just a couple of examples, but <clears throat> as you may have seen in the um, FY21 annual plan of work, it's really just modest um, adjustments that are being made and being recommended. Um, right now, I'm suggesting that we continue to maintain our operations um, to the extent possible. A lot of our uh, meetings with partners continue to be coordination type of meetings and helping to support each other. Think about new ways of being to able to execute programs or to deliver our services in a slightly different way. Um, the, probably the largest um, adjustments come under goal number five, um, which include things such as developing training schedules and transition plans for all positions. These again are some things that um, are not only incorporated into the, the, the policy discussions that we've been having recently, um, but it's something that we've actually been talking about for quite some time as well. So I think it's, it's really important that we continue to move forward on some of those. Having a new person on staff um, is also really helpful uh, in, in terms of thinking through some of the, some of the various needs. Um, and then there's again, just a sort of this um, um, reviewing and modifying the district policies and procedures. Again, this is for the remainder of our fiscal year. So focusing on clarifying personnel policies and the responsibilities of our board of directors. So it goes along with what we have been, um, what we have been uh, talking about already. So with that, are there any questions on our annual plan of work? A lot of our, I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I keep talking. Um, but uh, a lot of the programs that we have are evergreen right now. Um, so it's really, again, just continuing uh, to maintain those. It does not mean that we can't be creative and opportunistic if something comes up. Um, the annual plan of work gives sets basically our base. If there's something new that's outside of our scope, that gives us a nice opportunity to say, that sounds like a really interesting project. Here's here's a proposal for how we can do it, and here's the associated budget. Um, so that's that's I want to you know just acknowledge that that's one of the the important aspects of our annual plan of work is um, again having it serve as that base. But are there any questions? Well, I really. Oh, sorry, well, I, I just, just want to say I appreciate the the outline. I also think we need to be very mindful for as far as new projects are coming up concerned with COVID. We do have an expectation that we will see this at least through the end of the summer that even with vaccines coming out, we can't really have an expectation that there'll be a return to normal um, over the next six to nine months. And, and with things being up in the air, we just I think um, evergreen is critically important and the strategic ideas of and, uh, Considering new opportunities, we should be looking at that a little bit further into the future versus the upcoming year, just because of um, just because of COVID. I think we we're going to be somewhat tied to that. I think it's interesting because a lot of our external services, the services that we provide to the individual residents, are things that really are the evergreen. The, the interesting innovations that we have, and COVID has actually provided an opportunity for us to kind of take a look at. Well, that didn't quite go right. Can we use that as a case study for trying to understand, you know, this? Um, yeah. So there are some of those conversations that are going on, um, and we may be, you know, coming forward with uh, with with some of those in in uh, the new year as well. So um, stay tuned. But it, you know, certainly I think in the delivery of a lot of our educational programs, um, those are going to be the things that I, I think really are going to be the most impacted. Um, yeah. We are 
planning on doing our seedling sale. Um, and we will be moving forward on that. Our, as you heard from Maria at the last several board meetings, um, she has been working really well and, and really hard to come up with, work with our team to come up with some strategies for ensuring a safe event. And um, I think we're, we're gonna be able to achieve that. Laura, could, I, could that. I back you up and talk about that school program that you mentioned that DEQ or somebody was probably gonna do a little differently, but they're not gonna cancel it, are they? Well, Fairfax County is the one that administers that program. Okay. And so it really is all about engaging the students in planting these bioretention facilities. And that was actually a program that stemmed from our LID assessments. Right. We did those assessments and found that the majority of those that were located on school properties were in disrepair. Um, the county used that information and said, well, we a program around that to be able to engage the students. So the student participation is something that is really limited. And so they're having to rethink their their initiative. I don't think it's something that's going to go away completely, but it okay. may be paused for the time being. So pause is a good idea, a good word. Yeah. And that's that's kind of how a lot of things are right now. Things that were normal, you know, again, anything that really engaged large really were in school programs um, have had to be paused in that kind of normal capacity. But as you've seen, we've developed some videos. Um, we have we are still serving that portion of the community. Um, the watershed model is still something that teachers are borrowing and then doing it virtually. Um, so there's you know, there's still quite a bit of activities that are going on in regards to our stream monitoring program and even our storm drain labeling program. Those programs have not paused. As a matter of fact, as I was kind of mentioning, people are getting outside. They're looking for meaningful experiences. Um, we have more demand for those programs um, than we have. Uh, then we have to keep the, the group sizes smaller uh, and manageable. Um, but uh, as Ashley was sharing with me, and as you may have seen from some of her reports, um, there continues to be a lot of interest in that program. So well, that's good. That's good. And we've made um, special accommodations so that folks can maintain their social distancing. Um, families can stay together as as needed and, you know, things like that. So it has been uh, we have been able to transition well. I would I would back up um, your proposal to just make the limited uh, changes that you're, you've suggested, Laura. Um, I, because things it's. it's we have such a mountain of, of deliberative things to go through before we make any radical changes. Uh, but I suggest that the discussions about new work coming in, encompassed with a strategic plan, and the policy stuff, that needs to proceed now. Uh, we can't be waiting until next summer we all have shots uh, to, to get ahead of the curve. I, I think, I absolutely. I don't, this does not prevent us from moving forward on the strategic plan. No. What, what I'm recommending for the strategic plan is um, that we extend our current strategic plan through June 30th, 2021. So that that gives us six months for us to really get our strategic plan in order. Um, so I totally agree. We have so, we have a big job to do and we, and we need, you know, let's give ourselves some, some uh, <laughs> runway to take off on. Yes, and I wanna tell you again, we've, the, the, we've had a lot of conversations um, as staff um, and thinking about some of these kinds of things. We've had a survey um, that has been out for, for quite some time. So we have some information, we've got something to chew on um, and, and couple that with the information that Monica has and your own ideas, um, as well as those of our associates and, and others. Um, it's gonna be a really robust conversation. It's something I'm really looking forward to. And we'll be glad that we have some space to be able to accommodate that. Right. So, at Sorry. Do, do we need to make a motion in the regular meeting to to postpone adopt the uh, annual plan of work and to yes. postpone the board meeting? Mm -hmm. If we could say um, we're extending the strategic plan to June thirtieth, twenty twenty one. Great. Is, is that Jerry? Would you feel comfortable making that motion? I can. Sure. Okay. Yeah, you brought the agenda any place? Um, we have on the agenda section for. Uh, Ex, uh, executive operations committee meeting report and recommendations. I can prompt sense. you. I think John, I put myself there, but I can, I can certainly. Yeah, that would, that would be a place for all of this. Okay. 
She's, if you're looking at the agenda for the board meeting, that's just kind of shown between items three and four as a placeholder. Correct. Can I um, just say that I was on another meeting yesterday with some folks from American University and some other things in, in our region. And I mean, they're hoping that maybe they go back face to face in the fall. Like they already know that likely we won't do our field day again at American University, which was a large in person. I think you've been to it maybe, uh, Laura. I know some of our staff has, and it's like usually 350 plus people at the AU campus one day and they've already said, oh, I don't think it's going to happen. So yeah, I'm preparing myself for that. I've already, I've, I, but I've to also told the master gardeners that we'll see how things go as far as face-to-face -face, because there are, like we said, some face-to-face -face things and some other small training things. And people right now are yearning so much for that like face-to-face -face thing that it's really hard even when you get people together the times that i had to remind people about a week ago we just had like a little drive-through graduation and some of the master gardeners got out of their cars to see each other and i kept on having to say even though you have a mask on you still have to stay six feet from that person right. and this is like in a parking lot and i'm telling adults this and that's not fair and and I know everybody knows that and they're just really happy to see their friends that they haven't seen in eight months and so I think even when we get back together it's going to be hard you know we're still going to be worried and concerned so you know kind of going forward with as much stuff as this as we possibly can um I I I think that you know doing as many face-to-face -face things as we can and offering the space that we can, you know, it's what we can do. Yeah. But. And I, and I think it's really critical to listen to what the community's needs are in the moment and answer them to them in a way that showcases our expertise. You know, we know right now in the next few months, it's going to be all about food insecurity. That's where the focus is. And so where do we take that expertise that we have in, in working with our farms and our urban areas to showcase that on social media at this time? Like, so it's, it's that kind of connectivity that we have to be, you know, we have priorities, but you know, what I've learned from being in the grassroots world is that we sometimes have to merge those with our community priorities and we have to identify the best way to do that and how do we overlap that so that we showcase our strength and that, and the resources we the resource we are and um and then and then work from there so just that's another just a, a space to consider as we look at some of our communications tools and our outreach and things like that is is mirroring what the community needs are because you don't want to be out of step with where the concerns are and the priorities are. And there's a way to merge both. It's just being sensitive to that. Well, those are opportunities. When you see people that have needs, you know, we'll yeah. figure out what, how we can use what we have and what we want to have. That's, That's right. Yeah, and, and, so and certainly there's there's a lot of a lot of groups um, you know, that are that are out there the that are doing a lot of the similar kinds of things. So making sure that we're seated at the table. Um, and bringing those expertise to, to that so that the delivery of services, regardless of who's doing it, there's that consistent messaging and things that is that's um, that's moving forward as well. And there's that recognition of, of the value of each, that each group brings. Uh, absolutely. That's one of the things that the district does does best. All right, let's, let's can, can we continue or maybe wrap up the discussion on the annual, annual plan of work? Does anybody have any suggestions for additions or subtractions from, from Laura's amendments? If I'm going to make a motion <laughs> at, at the board meeting, I want to know that uh, uh, what your opinions are. Does anybody have any comments on that? I'm, I ran them over. They're, they're very modest. It's no, like I, didn't, I didn't hear any, Jerry. Yeah, okay, no, no any. Thank you. No, are you ready to tackle the budget? Okay, so let me start off with real quick the, the staff bonuses. So, um, as you all might recall, um, in September there there was September or October. I'm sorry, my dates are running running together a bit. But when we when we made our sweep um, 
and Chris presented the the uh, distribution into dedicated reserves. You might recall that fifteen thousand dollars was swept for staff bonuses. Um, and so my recommendation is the equal distribution of that among our six team members um, for uh, for this calendar year. I'm sorry, it was for FY20. Um, and so, uh, and making that available with the next payroll. So just in time for the holidays, I think it's a, a really uh, generous uh, bonus. And I, I, on behalf of all the staff, I know it will be, be greatly appreciated and, and something that um, is really great. And if uh, Chris and anybody <coughs> would like, we can pull together a letter for everybody to sign, uh, for the board to be able to sign in, in terms of thanking the staff for their hard work in FY20 and, um, you know, and, and just, again, expressing your appreciation. Did, did I understand the, the total amount was 15,000? That's correct. Were you including yourself in that, Laura? That was my question too. <laughs> Should I? Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then yes. So that would make it an even, um, $2,500 for each staff before taxes. And I think we could put together a letter that every director could sign. I think that would be really Thank wonderful. you, letter. If you would like, I'd be happy to draft something for you all. And um, and then you can either send me an electronic signature if you have that. I'll send it to you all so that you see what's, what would be be going out. Um, okay. If you have a, a electronic signature, can even just send me a picture. Um, that would be great. Laura, did the salary increases go through? They did go through, and um, as uh, and that they were very uh, much appreciated. I did encourage them to reach out to you all, but um, if that hasn't happened yet, just stay steady because I know that um, they were they were very much appreciated. Did you do it for the beginning of the the month time pay scale or this one? Uh, I was at the. It was. It was shortly after the board meeting. It was within that um, pay scale pay period that we had um, discussed. So they've been those salaries have been in place since um, early November, with that first pay period in November. Thanks to you and Heather for changing things that quickly. No, well, really appreciate it. that was uh, that was is definitely moves us forward in a in a very positive way and um, just really appreciate the board's you know constructive conversation around that. In regards to the budget, I um, do really for the next you know few minutes. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. I do plan on going through a, a brief presentation. Excuse me, brief presentation during the board meeting. Sorry. Um, so I'll be going through a brief presentation through during the board meeting to kind of go over um, some of the items, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have um, before then. Did you see Chris's questions to you earlier? Um, the, the treasurer's report. Yes. yes. So we. Will My question about this we received this yesterday. Has the finance committee been over this? Have they reviewed this? Um, I understand it's two parts. One, one is the overall budget, uh, but that's embedded in uh, uh, what do you call it? A, um, contributory request to the county. Um, John, Chris, have you seen this before? Before yesterday, the budget. Yeah. Uh, well, I say the budget. It. It's it's the contributory request. Oh yes, is, isn't it? Isn't the budget embedded in that, or is it two separate documents? I well, the contributory request is embedded into the budget. Into the budget. Um. So the our our full budget. So in answer to your question, Jerry, um, we have been talking about the budget, but no, you're right. The the um, everybody received the the completed package yesterday. Um, so if, if there is a need for some additional time, if you guys would like some additional time, we can certainly, um, set up another opportunity to, to discuss it, um, in, in December, uh, to, to, um, to review, uh, I certainly understand that. I would, I would leave that up to the finance committee. If the finance committee is, is okay with the time frame they've had to review this and, and, uh, they haven't found any problems, then no problem, but that's. Something I have not engaged myself in, so I don't have anything to contribute. 
Laura, you mentioned in the text to me yesterday that we could delay it to a special meeting in December. When's the last time period that you would want to get it into uh, Christina Jackson? I, I would prefer to get it in before the holidays um, uh, and ideally uh, before the, the really before that third week of December. Okay, by holidays, you don't mean Thanksgiving. You mean. No, sorry, <laughs> the, the December holidays, excuse me. The, the, you know, Late December holidays. I know there's many holidays in December, um, but uh, well, yeah. you're thinking, Laura, if you're looking at a calendar, are you thinking by about the 18th, which is the third Friday? It's the week before Christmas. Uh, yes, by the 18th. Because I didn't get back to my computer till last night about 9, 930 and I looked at the treasurer's report first because I was going to have to do something about that in a few minutes from now. And I briefly read it. I didn't see any problems, but I'd like to read it as the finance chair and treasurer a little more thoroughly. Um, it's pretty straightforward from what I saw. But I, I would like the opportunity to look at it. And what's the do we have to vote at a board meeting to accept it or? Because we aren't going to have it. December we need to approve it. We would need to approve it. Um, it's so the one thing that you can do, uh, my my recommendation, as you might have seen, is to keep our request to Fairfax County level, um, and to keep that. I agree with that. And so the one thing that we can do is just let them know that that is what the plan is. Um, if if that's something that you do want to do, I am not opposed to letting them know that we will have a final decision by the eleventh by um december 18th um and have an opportunity for a, a, a more robust discussion and, and again give you all the time to review that i think that's completely fair i apologize that i didn't get it out to you all uh sooner than yesterday it's um i don't know if you can see how red my face is in regards to that um but uh you know i appreciate that everybody's um i appreciate your patience uh, I, do, I do want to say i took the time to read through the whole thing and uh, I found it really interesting to have everything together in one package. It's really a, a great summary uh, of what we do and what we offer to the county. I think you've, you've written a very good uh, uh, proposal in terms of actually the pages, and, and that's I think that's a better tribute to how much gets done because there's a lot in there. Yeah. Now, when does the budget actually have to be approved by? What's the drop dead date? Um. The um it, it it is approved in april um so if you're talking about the fairfax county board of supervisors budget no, i'm talking about our budget oh our budget our budget so your approval basically um is a approving our budget but it yes. is still very much dependent upon what the county's contribution will be and i yes. am very confident that with our base contribution being level we can expect that um and then anticipating this the DCR administrative and operations grant that 105 183 that being level we don't find out about those two items until April or May and then the allocation that we expect through the agricultural cost share program we don't usually find out until May so what I would like to recommend is what you essentially you're doing is approving i guess you would be approving our preliminary budget and then we would finalize it in in may based oh. upon usually by now i i talk with you know christina jackson and i talk with with debbie and i kind of get a feel for where they think things are going to go but the reason i ask that is because that's probably what we need to do at this upcoming board meeting unless you want to have another meeting in december I, if we want to approve the preliminary meeting and the request to, to our contributory request to Fairfax County, that's absolutely something you can do um, if if everybody feels comfortable uh, moving forward with, excuse me. Can, can we approve that 554-811 in concept and just defer without voting any editorial comments on the the overall document? um we can if you well the this this package that we provide is what we we do provide also to fairfax county right so we can if you want to approve the uh contributory request of 548 
whatever it is. I'm sorry. Um, 552-811. Um, you're welcome to you're welcome to do that. And then if you we can submit the um, if we need a little bit more time to review the finance committee would like to meet to review the document, we could do that. Well, I'd only need a day or two to read it, but it just yesterday wasn't a good day. Okay. We, we could probably <laughs> we could probably get the finance committee back together early in December sometime, it seems to me, and make that decision so that we could proceed. This doesn't this doesn't um is there any concern from Fairfax perspective if we don't if we can I mean how soon can we turn that around if it only takes a day or so just to make sure that we're if you want to go ahead and approve the package today you could do that and we could always we could always use the um you could make the motion and say that it's pending the the finance committee review and so um you know that so approve with pending finance review that that verbiage that verbiage yeah that makes sense. And the budget itself does need to be approved, so that will require a vote. I'll, that's the 554-811, and I'll, I'll make a motion to approve that um, funding request to the county for that. And just that everybody will have even a week to editorial, get edits back to Laura if there are any. And I'm not sure we'll even have to have the finance committee if we share them amongst ourselves. Just be careful with FOIA. Yeah. yeah. I, was I just went through the FOIA training. <laughs> if you will please share your comments directly. That was quite good too. Yeah, good for you. I, I, I actually needed it. That's part of my executive director's report. Um, if you will please share your comments directly with me, I will compile them. If there's anything that may need to come back before the board, um, I'll, I'd be happy to schedule something um, so that we can have a conversation. So can we, do we want to say by the end of next week, for example, we'll just make that amongst us. I don't think that needs to be part of the motion. Um, but if we can make sure that any comments that you might have um, on the budget. Let, let's just go ahead and decide to do that and get our comments back to Laura by the end of next week. By the way, I don't know about the rest of you, but it's 25 after. We have another board meeting to come up here in five minutes. We probably all have to log off and log back in again. So do you want to just adjourn and we'll, is there anything else that you have to discuss, Laura, right now at this meeting? Uh, I don't. I just want to make sure, Chris, do you feel com comfortable with the motion that you're making in the board meeting? Yes, I do. And I, I that's why I just stated. Yep. Okay. Great. Just wanted to confirm. Um, that's all I've. Oh, Adrian's got. That. I have one thing only because it. Can, I'm being selfish and it concerns me. Where are we with my um, appointment to the board certificate paperwork? That kind of thing that comes back in December because of the state board meeting when they like approve me being appointed. Okay. That's right. So you and I. And, you, and then you'll have to take your oath of office. Right. And Laura, you and I will just kind of touch base on that. We will touch base. I believe that the, the um, State Soil and Water Conservation Board is meeting that full week, that first full week, so, so the week of the 7th um, okay. in December. So we should hear back very shortly after then. All right. Sounds good. I just didn't know if I missed anything and didn't want to screw anything up. Is there anything else the board members want to bring up for this operations committee meeting? Or Laura, do you have anything else? No, that's all I have for today. So thank you all very much. Not, I think we probably need to adjourn and we have to log off and log back in. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you.